I'm gonna give you four key aspects behind in-season football training, and we're gonna start right now. What's up everybody, it's Dane Miller from GarageStrength.com, and if this is your first time to the channel and you wanna learn how to become an explosive freak, you wanna improve your athletic capability, make sure you comment down below, you like, you subscribe, and you ring that notification bell so that we can help you become a champion. So over the last decade, we've worked with multiple Power Five athletes that have gone on to play collegiate football in the Power Five conferences. We've worked with high school football teams that have made it to the state semifinals multiple times in the state of Pennsylvania. And one of the biggest aspects behind this success on the gridiron is the fact that we've been able to take off-season football strength training and implement these types of ideas and methodology all the way through that in-season perspective. And this has helped transition athletes and football players specifically throughout the season so that they don't lose a ton of strength. They're easily able to maintain and prevent injuries as well. And over time, they can lead to a peak in those big in-season competitions. So what are some of those key aspects behind in-season strength training for football? Right away, we've got to start off with know your opponents and know your schedule. And one of the biggest things that I've prided myself on is that when I'm working with football players, specifically football teams, I'm able to meet with their football coaches and analyze those challenging games versus those games that might not be as challenging. And that can help us determine the frequency of strength training that we're going to be doing in the weight room. For instance, if we're going to be playing a team that's a stacked team, they're very, very difficult. We might only do a workout on a Monday and a Wednesday, and that Wednesday workout might be very, very easy. In high school football, we're typically gonna be playing on a Friday. So they're really only training twice that week, and it's that second session is going to be an easier session, so they might only work out twice. Now, if we're in a good position during the week and we're playing a team that's a little bit weaker, they're not as strong, we know that we can dominate them even if they're in a position where they're sore and they're a little beat up from training in the weight room. Now we can work out on a Monday, a Tuesday, and a Thursday. And that Thursday workout is gonna be a shakeout workout. It might be 20 to 30 minutes. It's just technical work with the Olympic lifts or with speed squats, something along these lines. But we can still get that extra volume done and head into that game on Friday and still dominate because we're getting that good workout in. So we can know the schedule and we can establish that frequency. And we've got to recognize that if we're a powerful team, we can force good workouts and good training on those down weeks so that later on in the, in the month or later on in the season, we can back off a little so that our athletes and our football players can feel a little bit more fresh. That second key aspect behind in-season football training is understanding the transfer of training. We've got to remember that in-season football is difficult. The football players are going to be training for two hours out on the field. They're going to be wearing their gear. It might be hot out. It's hard. It's very difficult. And strength coaches forget this. They want the football players to come in and spend an hour and a half to two hours in the weight room. And that's not feasible. That leads to overuse injuries that burns out the football player and it beats them up. So we've got to understand that aspect of transfer of training. So what does that mean? We want to get the big movements done that can transfer to other movements. So we want to do key movements in the Olympic lifts, snatch, clean, anything along those lines. Then the big movements like a front squat or a back squat. And then we can finish off with some accessory work, but we've got to make sure that we're only doing about three to four exercises in each given session. Our football players are only taking about 40 to 45 minutes to get that work done before they head out to the football field. That third key aspect is to be aware of the problem areas. This is something that I learned early on. And, and the first year that I was working with one of the powerhouse football teams in my area, I started to recognize that a lot of the kids had some knee issues. And what ended up happening is I recognized that they didn't have the best ankle mobility. And on top of that, I was having them squat a little bit too much in season. They were playing on hard ground. They weren't playing on turf. They weren't playing, it, it was not raining that fall. 
So a lot of these guys were dealing with shin splints. They were dealing with knee issues that were caused by the hard grass fields that they were playing on and by too much volume with squatting. And so I took a step back and I started to recognize that the team in general was having specific problem areas. And then I could analyze and make improvements into the training on the, on the fly. And that helped me improve our outcome for that specific season. And then in the following seasons, one of the things that I've done is I've sat there and said, all right, wide receivers tend to have this issue. Linemen tend to have these issues. Let's make, a workout that can address these problem areas and that can help us continue to train throughout the football season. That fourth key aspect is make sure you get creative with those rep schemes. A lot of strength coaches get stuck in a rut where we're doing three sets of 10, five sets of five, three sets of eight, all of these lame generic rep schemes. And what ends up happening is it's not the best, especially in season. And if we can think about be aware of the transfer of training. Be aware of these problem areas. Know that schedule, okay? I like to use rep schemes that are like cluster rep schemes or on the minute rep schemes. And why do I like to use this? Is because that cluster style of training, so if we can think about it, if we're going maximal effort for a double, resting 30 seconds, do another double, rest 30 seconds, do another double, it's getting a lot of strength work done in a short time frame, And it's not gonna beat them up. On the minute drills is another aspect that I really, really like to use with my football players because it gets them into a groove and it gets them feeling good and it mimics that football situation. And it's a creative way to keep them engaged with strength training in season because they might be fatigued. So get creative with your rep schemes and recognize which ones are best and how you can utilize them to improve the performance of your football team. Now I'm gonna give you a key bonus behind that in-season football strength training, and that is making sure that your guys can body build. I know this sounds ridiculous, I know it sounds a little counterintuitive, but when football players are deep in the football season, they're beat up mentally, they're fatigued, they don't wanna to go to the weight room. They've got nicks all over their arm, their knees hurt, their ankles hurt, they've got shin splints, maybe they're, they sprain their ankle, their shoulders are banged up, whatever it might be, there's, they start to feel fatigued mentally. But if you can do some fun bodybuilding, they're gonna get into the weight room, they're gonna get a good pump going, and that's gonna help them feel a little bit better mentally about strength training, and it's gonna help them recover. And if there's specific problem areas in their shoulders or knees or back or anything along those lines, a little bit of bodybuilding can go a long way with injury prevention. So make sure that you utilize these four key aspects, utilize bodybuilding. If you want more information about cluster-based training, you can click on this video right here. If you want more information about football training, check out our How to Get Faster Football-Based Training Program at GarageStrength.com. Until next time, guys, peace.